Today we're going to learn how to find antiderivatives of functions involving e to the x. Quick refresher. And remember what the derivative of e to the x is? E to the x. It is e to the x. So the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x plus c. Plus c. All right, that's it. And then your homework is 20 problems that say what's the integral of e to the x. All right? Oh, wow. Wasn't that fast? Okay. okay. So obviously there's going to be some u substitution. Obviously the world hates us. Here we go. Because the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, so let's start with e to the 3x plus 1. And I'm going to give you a little word of advice. Whenever the exponent for e is not just x, that is usually your u, okay? About 92% of the time. So if you don't know what to do, and the x, you ask yourself, is my exponent x? If it's not, then make u, be, let u be that exponent, and then do a u substitution. So everybody try this. Do a u sub, see if you can get your answer. Because <laughs> this is exactly why people don't like you. Literally, I haven't even written down the problem yet, and you're already done. It's like that guy from Her like Halloween Town that like uses magic to read, you know? And like everybody wonders why he's so smart. He's like, I never use magic except to like you know skip like eight grades and cheat <laughs> in school. Like, I wish I was a magician. Isn't that so good at school? I'm like you don't even know. Yeah, I mean, that and I would be able to, like, okay. have those pants that scream. So, did y'all get the correct u, the correct du, correct rewriting of your integral? Yeah. Good. So now, the antiderivative of 1 third e to the u is? 1 third e to the 3x plus 1. Wait, 1 third e to the u plus c, which would be 1 third e to the 3x plus 1 plus c. What's well, going to How's that sit with you? That good? Yeah, well, how does that sit with these, Jacob? Here, go ahead. Hey, let's do some trade. <laughs> Anna, stand up so people can see your face. It's okay. <laughs> She's so nervous. <laughs> All right, here we go. So how about... I once stared into the camera, so I think my yeah, it looked good. Uh, what's the difference between pale and netted? Is this netted? Is this netted? Yeah, it's very hard to scratch them. Which one is, what is this? That's, um, it could be kale. I have kale in my sandwich. Yeah. Do you know kale? It, kale is one of the most nutrient dense so foods you can eat. What? Yes. What is it? It's it's really it's good. It's really good. It tastes yeah. like crap. It tastes so good. Hi, Ann Neenan. All right, quiet down, please. Uh, hey, let me get you back focused again. What? Uh, <laughs> what should you be for this one? Cotangent x. Cotangent x. Everyone, try your u sub. See if you can re rewrite your function. <laughs> That was just the most disgusting thing I've ever had in my life. Kale? Yeah, yeah and I've had that. I've had that. Like, you know the grass juice? Grass juice from like those smoothie places? I like that better than I like kale. Really? Yeah. I eat kale every day. That is so gross, Mr. Really? Spicy. <laughs> that's something you should keep to yourself. <laughs> oh, that's mean. <laughs> But you know, I don't eat plain kale. Oh, uh, that's probably why. I mix it in okay. with a salad. And See, I just ate straight, <laughs> straight plain <laughs> kale. Now, I don't know if I've ever just ate more than kale. Yeah, do you, yeah, you want to try some? No, it's okay. Plain kale? See, you just got healthier by eating that. It tastes like broccoli. No, it doesn't. It tastes like broccoli. Here we go. What's the like you? That's disgusting. What's the derivative of Cotan? 
Negatives. Oh, we are so not focused today. Cosecant squared x dx, right? Okay. Hey, wow, that's almost what we have. Just off by a negative, right? Isn't that convenient? Yeah. All right, so what we end up with is uh, the integral of negative e to the u du, negative e to the u plus c, so negative e to the cotangent x plus c. Oh, that's convenient. Good, let's take it up a notch. I know it has a horrible after base. Oh. oh my goodness, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't let me forget to bring in those right. recipes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to bring the, I had the Asian burger sauce last night and it was so delicious. It was, it was Asian superb. Burger sauce. Yeah. You want to know how to make it? So you have one half a cup of... Uh, All right, hang on, hold that thought. So here we go. Hey, the exponent is just x, so we, is you ever, should we just set u equal to x? No. Will you ever be x? No. Never. U is never, ever X. So, what do you think U should be for this problem? 2 plus E to the X. Oh, very good. Okay, so when in doubt, use the denominator. 2 plus E to the X. Everyone see if you can rewrite this integral. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Dragon fruit. Oh, dragon fruit. Have you ever had those like uh, what's it called those beans that make uh, things like sweet taste sour? Oh, like Jack and no, no, giant magic. Beanstalk magic. magic. What are they talking about? <laughs> what are we talking about? Magic about? beans. No, they're like actual beans that like grow, oh, and what they yeah. do is they like change the texture of your taste buds just to make everything sweet, sour, or. Like everything sweet, sour, and everything sour is sweet. Like a dog sounding. That makes no sense at all. It just flips sweet and sour, that. and they like sense at all. They're like in pill form now. Oh, yeah. How, How did you do with rewriting your integral? It like uses for yeah. over you. Oh. 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 talk to me. Questions? No. So what's oh what's the antiderivative of this? Ln. Ln. Absolute Ln. value of two plus e to the x. Absolute u. Good. And hey, you know what I'm going to do with this one? Math. Yes, in that I am dropping that absolute value. Why am I dropping the absolute value? To liberate myself. Oh, that, that was so beautifully put. <laughs> oh, JK. Yes, okay. Because e to the x is always positive. And of course, that comes in handy when we're making right? Sorry. 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 right? Okay. I just Knowing that e to the x is always positive will be very, come in very handy. Okay, uh, let's see. A couple more examples. Goodness, the example is just piling. I know, there's a lot of examples today. How about e to the x times the cosine of e to the x? Oh, that was really I think what's going to happen is that u is e to the x. No, no, that would make, yes it would. That would make this sense. feeling that cosine e to the x is going to be... Are you sure? That could be, that would make, no, that would make sense, yeah. Because you never change the argument of a... But think about that though, then what would the No, no, but then cosine of e to the x, e to the x has to become a u because it's not x. So, ah, there we go. What was that? Would you care to repeat, repeat that? that? And really slowly so that equal, the camera can hear? U is equal to e to the x because your argument is, is different than there's, there's something more than just x. Uh, yes, that is true. Someone's got some right, balls. Okay. Ryan, you gotta drop the mic. I don't have the mic though. Just drop your voice. <laughs> oh man, finally I'm going awful. I don't actually know. Keep going with it. Don't just wait for me to do it for you. I'm actually 100% lost, I'm going to be honest. You're not 100%, you've got the correct U. Yeah, true, but after that, I just kind of like, it's a bad line. It's just integral sign U. Make sure you actually can. Wait, wait, wait. Did you find DU? DU equals E to the X of. Yeah. Ah, find that first because that's important when you substitute everything. Oh, s no, I don't know. That's what I got to happen. Replace the cosine first. 
Yeah. All right, so, Coast, wait, but I thought you, the actual, so this is you right here, right? No, oh, hang on, just fill like that song. off for a second. Okay, rewrite your integral. Yes. So, so, replace the cosine first. E to the X. Okay, <laughs> you keep ignoring me. Okay, replace the cosine first with what you have. Cosine of what? Oh, cosine of something. You. Yes. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, stop, stop. Stop. DU. Wait, wait, wait. DX is not just DU. You can't just change the DX to oh, a DU. Oh. Ooh. So then this is EX squared. Or no, no, because it's, oh, no, you're solving for it. One over EX. Oh, right. Yeah. You're making this so complicated. And then the EX is just cancel out. I'm so just doing the board. Yes, that works. Yes. That works. Oh, that's so an extremely smart. complex way to approach it. That's but just you how got it, it. That's just how I do everything. All right, I'm going to walk you through. U is e to the x. DU is e to the x dx, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. This cosine of e to the x becomes the cosine of u, right? Yep. So that's taken care of. We're left with e to the x dx, but oh e to the x God. dx is just du. So just replace it with a du. This is just cosine u du. Oh, it's cool. very rare that you have to actually solve for x or anything like that. It's very rare. So anyway, so now, hey, what's the antiderivative of cosine? Sine e to the x or sine. Is it positive or negative? It's positive. Are you sure? I'm 100% positive. Uh-huh, you're Yay. right. Oh, I thought I'd get you. Okay, so this equals sine of e to the x plus c. Do you have questions? Are you sure? All right. Yes? If you had like an even a negative x, what would the derivative of that be? Isn't that funny that you bring that up? Because we were, that was the next thing I was going to talk about. So very good segue into the last little topic here. Okay, as a small time saver, you know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. I don't know if you guys remember this or not, but when we did derivatives of e to the x, I taught you a time saver uh, just for to give your brain a little bit of a break. And I said, hey, Sorry. The, the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Got my trash to the trash can on the first try. So. The derivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. Oh, that's much. So the integral of e to the negative x is also negative e to the negative x. What's going to happen in a lot of these problems is, say you're given a problem like e to the x plus e to the negative x over 6. Something like that? Okay. Now, remember, is this over 6 like something to freak out about? No, just pull it out. Just pull it out. It's just a coefficient, right? Really? Okay. So this is just 1, 6 times whatever these antiderivatives are. What's the antiderivative e to the x? e to the x. e to the x. And then you have minus 1, 6 e to the negative x plus c. So the antiderivative e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. Sounds like a nice tongue twister. It is, isn't it? Yes. So it, it just helps you. So you don't have to, don't do a u substitution on e to the negative x. Just know that the integral is negative e to the negative x. All right. Could you do the same thing with trig functions? Like if you know that if you plug a negative in for an argument that a... Just neg like sine of negative x? Yeah, that, that would become a negative... Negative... Cosine of negative x? Yeah. Yet yeah, for derivative or integral? Derivative. Yes. Well, would it work either way? Yes, except you've got to be careful with the already negative already being there. Okay. But yes, it would be negative times whatever the answer is. Yes. Okay, good. So tonight.